something more complicated yeah, and we might pause a little bit. Um, if the ship's moving and Argus is swinging, we have to yeah. make sure to do it pretty quickly so we don't lose track of things during the change. We'll generally tell the new incoming pilots, you know, the status of the vehicles, if any problems have happened, so that they're aware, you know, if there are any samples that are going to float out of boxes and such. So, um, yeah, just kind of try to do it efficiently. Um, and, yeah. Thank you, Antonella. Um, Keep them come on. We still have 500 meters to get to the surface. <laughs> Okay, for the scientists, when I'm older, I want to do the kind of stuff you all do, like identifying organisms. I'm in my 20s now. Where do you suggest I start? I suppose I, I should answer that one. <laughs> um, <laughs> trying to think where I started playing this game, if you will, what age? I, I was older than that. And... Um, I guess, I mean, what you're doing and watching right now and hopefully um, listening to some of the comments and identifications during the dive is not a bad place to start. Um, you can also look at the, the animal guide, the Okeanos animal guide, which soon the next version will actually have a lot of uh, Nautilus photo photos and Falcor photos incorporated into it as well. Um, Play games with yourself and uh, try to mem try to memorize. Look at it. Don't peek at the at what the name is and see if mm -hmm. you can um, yeah, see if you can come up with it and memorize it after a little while. Um, learn a little bit about the taxonomy and the tree of life and where animals sort of um, are found. <laughs> you know which are ancient animals and which are presumably uh, are more recent uh, evolutionary branches, if you will. It just kind of start to get a feel for you know understanding what what types of animals are out there and what the differences is between them and you know start start slow first of all what's the difference between urchins and sea cucumbers and sea stars and brittle stars and sea lilies and feather stars and get your head around the basics first mm -hmm. and then as you got all those down kind of work your way down in and get into more and more detail that's the only way I would suggest you do it. Okay, so Jason is asking another question. Jason. Uh, yeah, manganese encrusted bone surprised me. How did that bone avoid bone eating organisms? Oh, I love that question. <laughs> <laughs> Well, somebody else has to answer that because I have never been on a whale fall and I don't know anything about whale falls and bone eating organisms. So, Andy, your pilots or somebody. <laughs> well, pilots, yeah, oh, let me take a stab at that. Okay, <laughs> you go, Trevor. <laughs> well, <laughs> the whale skull keeps on the, on the move even after the whale is dead. It just grows these little whale bone legs and. <laughs> no, I don't know. Of course I don't know. I have no idea. We're, we, we don't have to answer this. This is a back row question. Yeah. Uh, or well, well somebody uh, I wonder how old that bone is when that happened, and I guess we rescued it, or it's being rescued before the organisms actually, in uh, a way, decompose it. What do you mean, mean. rescued? Encrusted. <laughs> oh, or is it being rescued? No, it's no. Be, it was encrusted with oh, manganese encrusted. crust. And we oh, left it there. Okay. It, it's still there. It's still there. I would I, I would question. say that the the uh, you know the way the bone eating organisms. I mean, it has to be you know enough concentration that and frequency that they would find food. It's not like they're omnipresent everywhere. So you know we may not get as many. Um, whale falls out here is say you might get along the California coast where you have so much gray whale migration, blue whales, humpback whales, you know, the density of these whales is so much, so much lower out here. So there may not be as many bone eating organisms available for things like that, like that whales, that skull on the bottom. So nothing may have found it. I'm going to slip out for a few minutes. Uh, my relief for breakfast has arrived. That's Dr. Orcutt.
So I'll be back shortly, or I may not, because we're not that far from the surface. So we'll, mm -hmm. we'll Don't look. leave us, Chris. But if I'm not back <laughs> on this shift, I'll be back on the next one. So so I'll talk to you. Breakfast uh, relief sounds pretty gourmet. Wow. Yep. <laughs> Chris, you can relieve me for breakfast. What time is it? It's seven thirty. Breakfast relief. Oh, Come you're on. not relieving for breakfast? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. nice try, Chris. <laughs> Somebody's hungry. <laughs> well, I'm so used to somebody coming up behind me who's the relief. I was thinking, well, it must be breakfast. <laughs> Gee, like, where's my mind? Maybe I've food? Ever heard I guess so. <laughs> yeah. Okay, excuse me. No relief it? for you. No. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it, you guys had already found it, or somebody had already found it, because uh, even when I started watching last night in the middle of the night, there, you were, they were already into the field, so in high density. They were, it was a little more patchy, but it was definitely high density, and then they wound up going onto that sort of steep knoll that's kind of right before the start point, and that was covered with stuff. So the bottom line is that where we started the other day was not the lower limit, and so this was a useful... Yeah. We'll never Thank know. You. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's okay. But, I mean, we have plenty of time to eat breakfast, too, because of the 8 o'clock. So no problem. You don't have to relieve me. I just <laughs> I get confused this time of morning. <laughs> it's too early. Too early yeah. for old crust. Yeah. Uh. So, I mean, this, this type of thing amuses, amuses the front row, so I'm glad I'm able to help. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and you've been up repeatedly from about... Midnight and two and uh -huh. three and four and watch. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Get a little bit punchy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, when I um, came aboard the Nautilus, I was wondering why all the ROV pilots were so young. Like so. Uh, they, like, they get to play with the ROV pilots. We were oh, born the ROVs recently. I thought. <laughs> but yeah, most of the pilots are very young. Because when you get older, you get wiser and you get out of this industry. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so we have a question. We have a couple of questions here. Um, Thank goodness. Between expeditions, do you all practice with Herc in a controlled environment like a pool? Or he just, or he's just packed away until the next dive? What, what was the question again? Do you practice between expeditions? In a controlled environment like a pool. What, piloting? Yeah. No. 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 Sometimes no. I've seen you practice when you're coming up in blue water. That's true. Yep. Yeah. That's, that's That's. a pretty big pool. It's a pretty big pool. <laughs> One of the world's biggest, yeah. in fact. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, no, we kind of learn on the go. And, yeah, I don't know what else to say to that. <laughs> Well, we have uh, another question here that I think it's going to carry us until the ROVs are on deck. Do you have a favorite question that you get from viewers? Or I guess what's what has been your favorite question? Everybody, I, Chris. This, this question is my favorite question. <laughs> well, I'll, yeah, exactly. I can tell you right now that after we're pretty drained of our stories and have bored pretty much everybody in the control room. Any question is my favorite <laughs> question. <laughs> <laughs> I like questions about science, of course, and I like questions about what we're doing and why we're doing it so we can actually explain what the whole purpose of these things. I guess that type of question is my favorite. What about yeah, you? It's daytime, so. Yeah, I like the questions that ask about the technology we're using, whether that's ROV, something that I can talk about, or hearing other people's answers about the scientific, not only the biology itself, but the technology used to sample or study it, as well as, you know, video and navigation equipment, hearing about all that, how that technology works is, is interesting to hear the answers of, or to answer the question myself for the ROV uh, technology. That's, that's my favorite question from a viewer. I was going to say, anything that you get to learn from another position, Yeah. like, there's so many cool people in here and getting to learn what they're doing and it's it's always exciting i think that and learning how people got here because there's just so many different paths that it's i think it's probably helpful to people who want to do this but it's also just super interesting to hear how people got here <laughs> 
Yeah. There's just some people who have not answered that question that are remaining silent over here. I I didn't answer yet, but I agree with Aaron and Trevor. I like things related to our, our job or the equipment. Um, yeah, those those are my faves. Yeah, thank you. How about Kainalu? Yeah, Kainalu. As our intern, <laughs> what has been your favorite question so far uh, in the audience? Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm new to the Nautilus, so anything really. I like just learning from what people. Yeah. Oh, we can hear you. I think you're muted. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me now? I can hear. I can hear. I can hear. Yeah, I can hear. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay cool. I'm sorry. Oh no. Muted. Yeah, it is. <laughs> kind of like what everyone was saying. I guess just learning from everyone that's in the van and and the different positions. And experiences yeah yeah we're all here because we're interested in it so it's it's good to hear people talk about things that they're interested in i think that's really yeah really fascinating yeah and yeah. yeah i like you the, are uncharacteristically quiet i like the big quick <laughs> big picture questions big picture big picture like monument what are we doing why are we doing it what's what do we hope to find from it I mean, for me, that's uh, the questions about what we don't know and why we don't know it. Yeah, we really like questions. As you can say, we sometimes try to fill the, the, the blue water with just tales from the deep sea. Anything <laughs> that comes to mind, even if it's not related to the Nautilus, I just try to find something that might be of interest to people out there. Three and a half? Yeah. So. Oh, maybe not. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty, what pretty is interesting speed? pursuit, that's for sure. You know, you think about, you think about these vessels oh, that are de knots. dedicated to exploration and all the crazy technologies <laughs> it takes really to, to make all this work, all the huh. telepresence stuff and the, the vehicles and connecting them to the ship and us communicating with you i mean you know a lot of exploration vessels don't invest in the outreach part of it and that's what's so cool about nautilus is is making sure that everybody can participate in real time we have a front row question again from an old salt okay you want to read it for them do i want to read it i no, can't I'm, read it i'm talking to aphrodite aphrodite excuse me um, basically, they're saying that uh, we haven't noticed very rough seas and wondered what sea state affects your decision to abort until the weather is calmer. It's a good question. And I think I got time for an answer. Okay, so let's talk about swell first. So swell, people say, how big is swell? Blah, blah, blah. It's complicated because it depends on period and how it aligns with everything else. So the short answer there is if there's too much tension in the main 6-8 wire. That's the main umbilical connecting Argus to the ship. Uh, so swell is, the limiting factor on swell is the tension. If our tension gets above 15, 16,000 pounds, then we have to recover. Because getting up to around 20,000 pounds is when you start seeing failures. Uh, failures of electrical conductors, and then you get you know, electrical shorts and the safety equipment catches it, but you can't use the vehicles anymore until you repair it. So we don't want to have big swell for that. As far as wind and current go, it depends again. There's no easy answer. It depends on their alignment. So if they're coming from the same direction, then you can get a lot more, uh, a lot higher magnitude of the current and the wind than if they're, say, 90 degrees out. So as long as, uh, in, in that case, the limiting factor is can the ship hold position and can the ship move the way we want it to? So holding position is the first step and then but if it can't go, say, north, and our dive trajectory is heading north, then that's not going to work very well for us. So the limiting factor is not, again, a definable specific number. It's more the, based on the ship's capabilities. Thank you. That was a very good question. Mm -hmm. Um. From Ohio, we have a viewer who wants to know 
What is the largest living creature you have personally seen on an expedition? <laughs> that, well, that that fin whale the other fin day. Fin whale, yes. By far, it's the second largest animal on the planet. That's yeah. pretty much the largest animal you can see, almost. We were very fortunate to have some fin whales come and visit the ship while he was sitting still and very safe the vehicles being deployed or down into the water and no sonar on or anything and whales came all around the ship and it was a fantastic treat uh going back to the plastics uh to build up of plastic particles when marine plastics are broken down to tiny scale mostly observe on fat reserves of organisms so the build up of plastic particles mostly observed on fat reserves of organisms on how, fat reserves good yeah how are broken down marine plastics detected detected in organisms huh I mean, I know that gut uh, analysis of gut contents, we've we found them there, but how they actually detect the, the microplastics in the fish um, and where they're stored, I don't, I don't know. I, mean, I know there's a bunch of studies on that, and you can probably look it up for yourself. So I'm not sure how those are stored or, or how, that, um, how they do those analyses. Um, but they, they have been found in... in Oh, we just got inked by a squid. Ooh. Um, yeah, and, and then also have, you know, I've found them in, in humans as well. Um, and even have a broad average statistic for the amount of plastic that uh, we ingest every, average human ingests every year. <laughs> Sorry, back row. My fault. Oh, didn't even notice. <clears throat> so... I don't know how they study that, they, how it embeds in the, the flesh of the fish. <coughs> but we can look it up. Um, so the question is about sonar in whales. As it turns out, the type of sonar that we use is... Um, not considered to be particularly harmful to cetaceans, um, except, I guess the one exception is um, there is a sphere of sound that supposedly comes from the transducer and extends out about 200 meters. And then from there, when we're multi-beam multi mapping, it's sort of a plane of sound. So it would be uh, quite a very, very brief exposure to sound if a whale was swimming through that plane while we we're mapping. But the general rule is that if one of these we see some whales that were within 200 meters of the ship, then we would stop the ship completely. We don't typically turn off the, the sonar because of a startle response. We don't want to turn it on. And if we do have to turn it off and turn it on, it's turned on very slowly. Um, but the, the main thing is we certainly wouldn't want to hit any whales in, inadvertently with the ship while moving. So when they're spotted, if, they, if that is a potential danger, then the ship would come to a stop. So we're we're very aware the 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 bridge, the pilot house is very aware and always watching out for um, cetaceans such as whales and other dolphins and things like that. So uh, we do what we can. It would, nobody wants to harm any of these magnificent animals in any way. We are 140 meters from the surface, so we're almost there. So getting back to the microplastics and fish, and now, I, now I'm kind of jogging my memory that there was uh, there were a couple papers that came out last year, towards the end of last year, about um, questioning the validity of some of the earlier studies about accumulation of 
microplastics in this in the in the cells of fish and um, kind of determining that certainly while they do consume them that they also found that they were able to purge those plastics but uh, couldn't couldn't really reproduce some of the results of um, embedding in the flesh of the fish so I guess it's still being debated as to to what degree they become resident inside the the tissues of the fish. I've always wondered that about the like sediment in the ocean, you know, silica, whatever, mm -hmm. sand, something like that. Uh, if a fish eats that, or a whale, or whatever, would that? How is that different? How does that differ from, let's say, an equivalently sized, equivalently surface texture microplastic, plastic bead, for example? Mm -hmm. Um. Well, I would say probably, you know, yeah. I mean it. I think well one of the I know that one of the concerns with plastics is that um, they they accumulate they also are uh, accumulate toxic materials they aggregate them in the marine environment that is persist pops the persistent organic pollutants uh, like things from fire retardants and things like that those chemicals they attract really strongly to plastics in these microplastics and so some cases they can be considered hazardous waste so consuming those they just just don't know to the degree Ooh, here comes a white tip look at that beautiful oh, yeah oh. hello oceanic white tip but he didn't have any pilot he does around him he has one on the dorsal you fin. can zoom oh does he yeah i love recovery visitors yeah i saw Where it i saw it? it earlier it's on the other side of it i saw oh. it i saw it when it was coming in it oh. was just on top there was just one of them um yeah that's cool So anyway, the question, the answer is that there's a lot still unknown about <laughs> plastics and their actual effects, whether they pass through the digestive system without any other, like they, like as if they were consuming sediment or other things, whether they cause hormonal changes in the animals. I mean, we do know that from the albatross, most of the time they're able to like purge these plastics, but because they're consuming so much, it fills up their stomachs, and they think that the the chicks think that they're full, even though they're they're full of plastic, and it causes them to dehydrate more more easily and more quickly. And that doesn't happen with sediments. Um, well, no, albatross wouldn't be fed sediments. I mean, sure, so I guess something oh, okay, similar in fish. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Don't know. Oh, come on. I want to see the white tip come back. Okay, Bien, once again, an identification nerd. A white tip is Carcharhinus longimanus, and that means long pectoral fins, long hands, if you will. And so they're very distinctive. They have very round pectoral fins, and almost every time you see them, they got at least one pilot fish accompanying them, these little striped fish. So... Kind of fun to see one I'm gonna of those. I'm going to stop guys. these now. Cool. Mm-hmm. They're not doing much. Yeah, so one little one, not a not a large pile of fish, but one little one on it's just just above its dorsal fin as it was coming in. The other one, the other day, they had a whole community of pilot fish associated with them. There was like a little little cloud that they had. Three knots. So the sharks are open ocean predators. They they they're not associated with shallow water environments. They they o cruise the open ocean. These guys. Yeah. Quite yeah. Fish, yeah. <laughs> and nice. often off of like Kona, off of uh, Hawaiian Islands, they they are seen associated with uh, like false killer whales. I'm set up for uh, they'll, recovery configuration. They'll follow here. pods of. Uh, of uh, false killer whales and which you know are really smart at finding no, I mean food this. and they'll kind of clean up the the aftermath of a of a hunting a mahi mahi or something like that well i think we ought to let the 
pilots in the front row do the recovery, and I think we ought to sign off about now. Okay. So thank you all very much for um, hanging with us and participating yeah, in this dive. And yeah, good thinking. Yeah. We're going to be uh, talking to you. Uh, recovery shortly. configuration here. We're going to uh, deploy very soon again today. So um, hopefully some of you can join us again. Thanks very much. Bye bye for now. Enjoy breakfast. <laughs> yeah. And thank you for all the questions. Stay tuned on nautiluslive.org for at our it. next Not dive. This one. Yeah. Are we ready? Are we ready? Oh, yeah. Deck control, we're at five zero meters, full stop. Does anybody have a radio? Move in, main deck, radio check. Loud and clear, Mark. We okay to continue up? We are okay to continue up. Understood. Bridge main deck, radio check. Loud and clear, Mark. Okay to bring it up? Please proceed. Understood, coming up. Here's my scheduled pilot complaint. I'm uh, full lateral. What you want? Nothing. Tell me what you want. No, I just wanted to complain. You just wanted to complain? <laughs> well, you know, that I have to do that. That's part of the checklist. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, let's wait another 20 meters and then we'll change it up. Yep. <laughs> I'll be fine. Get rid of this. Yeah, there we go. You can kill a mezzo. Yeah, I think I'll be fine. Okay, standing by for you to change your mind. <laughs> <laughs> and you can kill butt light too, and thrusters. Or all lights, yeah. You can kill all lights at 50. Killing the lights? Really? Me? Oh. He does not want the light on shallower than 10 meters. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for butt light, that's good. But in the day, it doesn't matter anyway. There's no winning. No, it doesn't matter. There's <laughs> no winning. You can't. There's can. no winning. <laughs> <laughs> it's important, yeah. Roger. <laughs> Sure. Get nervous? <laughs> no, I just slammed it to the right, so that's why I went that way. Okay. See if I could, because I couldn't, and then I could, you know. Cool, cool. I don't get nervous. I just get excited. It's fun. Recoveries are fun. Recoveries. Are you even moving forward anymore? They've been exciting. Um, We are, yep. Just a little bit. Okay. That's preferred. Barely. Bridge nav, can we reduce thrust on the jet pump, please? Thank you. It was coming up so fast on the winch. So fast.
you put bubble on the res, please? Res. No more fixes. Are you okay to hold when Argus is on? Yes. Okay. Bonk. Bridge nav, can we increase uh, thrust on the jet pump and hold position? Thank you. This is amazing. What lovely weather. I know. Flat Magic. calm. Beautiful. Magic. Like I can see all the way in butt cam to the main screw. Yeah. It's super cool. Got no crane guy. Yeah, what's going on there? Where's the wincher? There he is, running, running Rainy. for it. Running, Rennie. Hey, on the dive log, what's the lowest we've seen the res at mid dive? Okay, cool. That's that's definitely more than half full. So that's good. I think two or three is half full. Maybe. Two point nine's fine, yeah. <clears throat> okay.
Maybe this one too. Eric, you want to drive to the end of your tether there? Do you copy? I literally am doing that. Copy, he's trying. I mean, I'm, I did it and I pulled on the tether, so yeah. I stopped, and then she said that. <laughs> it's just now it's become habit to ask for that every time. Same again. Same again. Yeah, that too.
Yeah, go coming out of the water now. 